Hello everyone, I am the 12th Women's World Chess Champion Alexandra Kostinyuk and in this video we're gonna talk about general principles that are good to know in endgames. Of course there are concrete and specific positions that we discussed in the previous videos but sometimes it's very important to see what are you doing, what is your plan and why are you doing uh, these moves. So let's have a look at the first position. It's white to move. We can see it's a rook endgame. By the way, it's the most common endgame that uh, happens in chess. White has an extra pawn. And there is very important rule to remember. If you have a material advantage, in this case, white has material advantage, it's suggested often, it's a good uh, idea to exchange pieces, not pawns, pieces. And it's white to move. And if we look closely enough, we can see the move rook e8, forcing black to play rook f8 and thus exchanging rooks. With one extra pawn in rook endgames, it, it's quite often a draw. With one extra pawn in pawn endgames, it's 90% winning. So, and this is the case, it's a winning endgame and we go to another general principle uh, of playing endgames, bring your king out and try to activate it as soon as possible. There are fewer pieces on the board. Well, here there are no pieces left, only pawns. Thus, there are no checkmating threats to your king. So your king should become a very powerful piece, should take part into action. And the plan for White here is to bring your king to the center, and that's what uh, White does. Then, using the fact that uh, White has an extra pawn on one side, distract this king from these pawns. And while it needs to do something about this past pawn, run to this side and win uh, these pawns. So. Well, the line can be something like this. Let's say g5, b4, h5, a4. Well, black is pushing pawns, although they, they better keep them as far away from the king as possible. But anyway, white's plan is still connected with getting ready to create a passed pawn that is going to distract the king. And using this time, when it gets to this pawn and tries to win it, get with our king to these pawns, take them and promote our own pawns. Let's get going. Let's analyze another example also. Same idea that we already talked in the first um, example. If you have a material advantage and white has an extra pawn here, it might be a good idea if you can exchange pieces. And here white exchanges pieces, a bishop for a knight, and then the plan is similar. Bring your king out to the center, try to create a passed pawn, distract this king and use the time that you get while it tries to stop your passed pawn uh, to get to these pawns, win them and promote your pawns on this side. Let's get going. It's white to move and white has a very strong move here, which is rook e6. In general, in chess, it's better, it's often a good idea to look for great squares for your pieces. In that game, it's still the same. We try to activate our pieces. Still, we have less pieces than in the middle game and in the opening. It's important to use uh, those few pieces to their maximum. And here, white has a winning position just because white rook kind of um, forces black rook to protect this pawn and at the same time white king will get in so much better position compared to the black king because black king has nowhere to go white rook is so ideally located on e6 that it's not only forces black rook to uh, stay on the d file but also cuts out the black king from the center and just Black just needs to wait and see while white is improving the position of his king and then just breaks through by playing h5 
create weak pawns and win this game. So the position of your pieces and activity of your king can be key factors for playing end games. One more example on how important it is to create a passed pawn in end games. We talked about material advantage already and importance of exchanging uh, pieces if you have material advantage. We talked about activity of your pieces and activity of your king. And now we are going to talk about importance of creating past pawns. If you have a chance to create a past pawn, this can be a very crucial factor. So let's have a look at this position. White has a very strong move, which is f4. And this move kind of blocks black's majority on the king side. Three white pawns stops four black pawns. And even though there is no material advantage, white and black has even number of pawns, but the situation is quite different. And in fact, white has almost an extra pawn on the queen side. And they can use this pawn to distract this king while it stops this past pawn, white gets to these pawns and wins them and wins the game. So that's the winning plan to activate uh, the king. And then play c5 at some point. And while a black's king needs to get away, for example, something like this can be played. While it gets away, we can play c6 and king e6 or even king f6 and get to g6, h5, and then promote our own pawn. One more example of the importance of your king. Sometimes when we see a passed pawn and uh, we don't know what to do, and in order to improve your position, just remember about your king. Here, white stands beautifully. The rook protects the extra pawn on b5, and at the same time, it protects uh, this pawn, the pawn on g3. That means that white has time to activate the king. When I say activate, it's not only about uh, putting it in the center. Sometimes an active king means the king that fights on the back rank if it fights against the past pawn. Uh, so here it's also the case. We're not um, trying to get the king to e4. We're trying to get it to c2, we try to attack the rook and then bring our king to this pawn and help it to promote. And the final position, it's white to move. If we look at the pawns that uh, black's pawns here are poorly placed because they limit their own bishop and uh, it's usually suggested to put your pawns on the squares opposite of the color of your bishop. If it's not opposite color bishops and games, then it's a little bit different. But anyway, here white can take f takes g5. Why with the f pawn? Because this move opens up the road to the king to e5. And that's why it's so important. Because usually, again, chess is all about exceptions. It suggests that if you have a choice, to take towards the center. But, but here it's about the king and about this road to the central square. So f takes g5 is a very strong move. And when the king gets to e5, for example, if black plays bishop e8, if it gets to e5, then it's easy to put black into Zugzwang. If the king goes, then our king gets to f6. If the bishop moves, it has to move so it keeps uh, this pawn protected. Otherwise, every single pawn is going to be lost. If it goes to g8, then h5. White will get through and will win the game quite easily. So this is another example of how important it is to bring your king to the center, to bring your king into play. So to sum up, there can be many examples, but to sum up, the three main points of uh, any endgames, general principles of endgames. 
First, if you have material advantage, try to exchange pieces. Fewer pieces your opponent has on the board, more difficult for him to fight against uh, material advantage. Second, in the endgame, don't forget that there are less chances for your king uh, to uh, get attacked. So if there are no such uh, threats, you need to bring your king to the center, to the game. Uh, where the action uh, is taking place as soon as possible, because the king is a, usually is a very powerful force in endgames, and that's what makes uh, this stage of the game different from middle game and opening. So bring your king to the game, to the action, uh, if there are no checkmating threats, um, as soon as possible. And third, in endgames, pawns become also quite important, especially past pawns. So if you have a chance and if you can, try to create a past pawn because past pawn can be a very uh, strong force. It can distract your opponent a lot and uh, thus uh, give you a chance to play on the other side of the board while all other pieces are trying to stop your past pawn. Uh, that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this video series. I know that we've discussed a lot of stuff, quite complicated stuff, even though that we just talked about pawnless uh, endgames and endgames with just one pawn. But nevertheless, I hope uh, that all those positions and all those examples that we discussed uh, will be helpful and will help you to become a better player. I hope to see you in the next video series. Uh, I wish you all the best in your games and see you soon.